San Jacinto CVL-30. Planned as Newark CL-100, she was reclassified as an aircraft carrier in June 1942. Her name was changed from Reprisal to San Jacinto in January 1943, and she was commissioned in December 1943. 8.4, under the command of Rear Admiral Ralph E. Davison aboard the carrier Franklin, CV-13, included Enterprise, CV-6. Task Group 38.4's two battleships, two heavy cruisers, and 11 destroyers joined light carriers Bella Wood, CVL-24, under the command of Captain John Perry, with Air Group 21 commanded by Lieutenant Commander V.F. Casey. San Jacinto, CVL-30, under the command of Captain M.H. Kernodal, with Air Group 51 commanded by Commander C.L. Moore. Throughout the landings and over the next few days in October, the light carriers provided support by pounding On October 20th, 1944, as American troops landed on Leyte in the central Philippines, San Jacinto provided close air support. On October 24th, this mission was interrupted by news of the tri-pronged approach of the Japanese fleet. San Jacinto sent planes against the central force in the Cebuian Sea, then raced north to launch strikes against the northern force, resulting in heavy damage to the Japanese carriers and surface combatants off Cape Engano. On October 30th, her fighters furnished air protection over Leyte while her guns shot down two planes attempting suicide attacks on the ship. After a pause at Ulithi, the carrier joined in attacks on the Manila Bay area, then took a side trip to Guam to exchange air groups, receiving Air Group 45. She was slightly damaged during a typhoon in December 1944. Burial at sea was a part of life during World War II, as seen in this film footage taken aboard USS San Jacinto with Marines firing rifles in honor of the dead. The San Jacinto's Marine Detachment kept their skills sharp and equipment ready with close order drill on the deck. Here, the San Jacinto refuels USS Endicott, a destroyer converted to a fast minesweeper on station in Tokyo Bay after the Japanese surrender. <laughs> 